For many companies like Vive and Pico, VR headsets are their bread and butter. It's what they do every day and they're fighting to gain traction and to stay alive in a very competitive marketplace. However, for companies like Apple, a VR headset, well, it's more like a hobby. But let me tell you, Apple's hobbies have produced some remarkable outcomes over the years, and I think the Vision Pro is a good hobby for Apple to have. Hi, I'm Professor C, and I talk about technology and its impact on society and geopolitics. And today, in a little bit longer video, we'll explore why great companies need hobbies. First, let's talk about another popular hobby of Apple, the Apple TV. The Apple TV was first introduced in 2016, some 16 years ago. I got excited and said the wrong date there, so let me try it again. First, let's talk about another popular hobby of Apple's, the Apple TV. The Apple TV was first introduced in 2006, some 16 years ago. At the time, it was a little bit bigger than the current Mac Mini, and it had a, a relatively large hard disk. What you would do with your Apple TV is you would buy your movie on iTunes on your Mac or PC. There were no phones, iPhones at that time. You would then have your Apple TV download the entire movie and have it ready to play in your living room. Now, as I remember, you could also have photos and music on it as well. I'll link to a video of Steve Jobs announcing the product below. Now, three years later, in 2010, Apple released the second generation Apple TV. They ditched the hard drive, and it was a streaming device only with minimal local storage. But like all good hobbies, Apple had learned a lot from their first generation Apple TV. Here's what Steve Jobs said at the announcement of the second generation Apple TV. Actually, it's one more hobby. Um, So, of course, we're talking about Apple TV. Now, we introduced Apple TV four years ago. And we've sold a lot of them, but it's never been a huge hit. And uh, nor is any other competitive product. Nothing's really hit in the living room yet. But we talk to people that use Apple TVs, and they love them. They absolutely love them and use them a lot. So what have we learned in the last four years? What have we learned from our users? Well, we've learned a lot. The first thing is the number one, two, and three thing they want is they want Hollywood movies and TV shows whenever they want them. It's that simple. It's not really complicated. They want Hollywood movies and TV shows. They don't want amateur hour. They want professional content. And they want everything in HD. The HD revolution is over. It happened. HD won. Everybody wants HD. <laughs> they like to pay lower prices for content, right? More, the lower the prices, the more they're going to watch. They don't want a computer on their TV. They have computers. They go to their widescreen TVs for entertainment, not to have another computer. This is a hard one for people in the computer industry to understand, but it's really easy for consumers to understand. They get it. They don't want to manage storage. When you buy a bunch of movies and TV shows, you have to manage them because you don't want to throw them away. You just bought them. And so you have storage management problems. Your hard disk starts to fill up. What are you going to do? People don't want to think about managing storage. They just want to watch movies and TV shows. And they don't want to sync to a computer. Most of them haven't even figured out what that is. <laughs> they want to pull some content off their computer, but they don't want the syncing stuff. It's too complicated. And they want whatever hardware we have to be silent, cool, and small. Right? Not too hard to understand. So this is what we've learned. And it's, it's really quite a bit different than a lot of other companies think. And either we're right or we're wrong, but this is what we've heard from our customers. And so we've made something new for them. This is the current Apple TV 
We are introducing the second generation of Apple TV today, and this is what it looks like. That same year, Steve Jobs talked about the Apple TV hobby at the 8th Annual All Things D Conference. This is a little bit longer clip, but watch it and you can see Steve describing the TV and the set-top industry and all the problems that this industry had. I think it's a brilliant analysis of the problems of this particular market at that particular time. The, the problem with innovation in the television industry is the go-to-market strategy. The television industry fundamentally has a subsidized business model that gives everybody a set-top box for free or for $10 a month. And that pretty much squashes any opportunity for innovation because nobody's willing to buy a set-top box. Ask TiVo, ask Replay TV, uh, you know, ask Roku, ask Voodoo, ask us, ask Google in a few months. Um, <laughs> so all you can do Sony's tried as well. I mean, Panasonic's tried. A lot of people have tried. They've all failed. So all you can do is add a box onto the TV system. You can say, well, gosh, I noticed my HD TV has a bunch of HDMI ports on it. One of them is coming from the set-top box. So I'll just add another little box with another one. Well, you just end up with a table full of remotes, cluster full of boxes, bunch of different UIs, and that's the situation we have today. The only way that's ever going to change is if you can really go back to square one and tear up the set-top box and redesign it from scratch with a consistent UI across all these different functions and get it to the consumer in a way that they're willing to pay for it. And uh, right now, there's no way to do that. So n that's the problem with the TV market. You know, we decided what product do we want the most? A better TV or a better phone? Well, the phone won out, but there was no chance to do a better TV because there was no way to get it to market. What do we want more, a tablet or a better TV? Well, probably a tablet, but it doesn't matter because if we wanted a better TV, there's no way to get it to market. The TV's going to lose until there's a better until there is a viable go-to-market strategy. Otherwise, you're just making another TiVo. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. That's the fundamental problem. It's not a problem of technology. It's not a problem of vision. It's a, go it's a fundamental go-to-market problem. But obviously, in the, in the phone area, you were able to recreate that uh, go-to-market strategy by working with the carrier. So does it make sense to partner with a, a cable operator? To well, then, then you run into another problem, which is there isn't a cable operator that's national. There's a bunch of cable operators. And then it's not like there's a GSM standard where you build a phone for the US and it also works in all these other countries. No, every single country has different standards, different government approvals. It's, a, it's very, um, it's very, uh, uh, What's the right Daunting. word? Daunting, challenging. Tower of Babelish, <laughs> you know? Or that's not the right word, balkanized. It's very balkanized. So um, I'm sure smarter people than us will figure this out. Uh, but that's why when we say Apple TV is a hobby, that's why we use that phrase. Now what Apple TV did for Apple, what this hobby did for Apple, was to get them into a market that was fraught with problems and complexity without going all in. They learned a lot about user behavior, the market, and they had a launching pad for when somebody else stumbled. I could play more clips, including one from Apple's current CEO, Tim Cook, when he called the Apple TV a beloved hobby during an earnings call in 2014. But instead, let's ask, what has happened as more and more companies have moved into the streaming business? Well, there's been several stumbles by the traditional players, and opportunities for Apple have opened up. HBO was the service that everybody wanted to have and was probably the best scripted television in the world. But the streaming wars escalated and the HBO brand has suffered and has had a major setback after Discovery and Warner Media merged and CEO David Zasloff 
pulled HBO under the Max umbrella. I guess he just likes burning uh, brand equity or something. I'm not really sure why in the world you do that. But I ask you, where are some of the best TV today? Well, it's on Apple TV+. Plus. Apple TV Plus is the streaming service that people want to have. It has contributed enormously to their bottom line, as Apple now has over a billion dollars of revenue from services every year. And that service has benefited greatly from all they learned over the last 16 years of watching how users behave with their streaming service, what they like to watch, all that kind of good stuff. Now I ask you, what other market is filled with lots of competitors, essentially gives away its headsets to customers in order to lock them into a market, and a killer app has yet to emerge? Yes, the VR market, or the metaverse market, or whatever the hell you want to call it. The Apple Vision Pro is a highly personal device. I talked with Apple about it. They said do not buy it for student use when it's going to be Every student's going to try and share one headset because it's highly personal. They're learning all sorts of stuff about machine learning, how to make that interaction with a user seamless. Okay, So this is their first generation. Think of it like the original Apple TV. It's a great hobby for Apple to be in. By having this hobby, Apple's going to learn a ton about VR, the metaverse, and all that kind of stuff. And in 16 years from now, well... I bet you we're going to be looking back and say that Apple headset was the start of a chain of events that have kicked off some new way that Apple is dominating a certain market segment. We could also do another video entirely about how Apple wants to be a company that stays around for the next hundred years. Okay, that's been a goal of uh, Steve Jobs and to, to make a brand that lasts over time. But like I said, that's probably another video. We could also make another one about those companies that had great hobbies like HP, but then gave up their hobbies and now extort us for ink prices, I guess. I don't know what HP really contributes to the world anymore, uh, but they were once a brilliant, brilliant company. They're why Silicon Valley is called Silicon Valley. It's not because of Google and all that more recent stuff. It's for companies like HP, which are just a shell of their former selves. But I'll leave those to other videos in the future, and I will just say thank you for watching, and for God's sakes, if you've made it this far, please subscribe.